All right. Hold on. Set the window. So now we're on Thunderball, the fourth James Bond film. This one has really the most uh, kind of troubled production is it actually starts several years before Dr. No. Ian Fleming wanted to actually make a James Bond film. And he actually wrote it with two other producers, Kevin McClory and Jack Whittingham. And uh, the movie never got made. And so Fleming took the script and turned it into his novel, Thunderball. Well, Kevin McClory decided it uh, because he didn't get any writing credits for it. He wanted payment for it. So he took Fleming to uh, court and won. And so he had the rights for it. So when it was time to make uh, Thunderball into a film, they had to include McClory in the process and make him a producer while Broccoli and Saltzman were executive producers on the film. Uh, and so we have Thunderball, which came out in 1965 and is once again directed by Terrence Young, who directed the first two films. Uh, they promised this to be the biggest Bond movie ever. I don't know how about that, but it was big at the time, I guess. Returning from the previous installments, of course, Sean Connery is James Bond. Uh, Bernard Lee is M. Desmond Llewellyn is Q. And Lois Maxwell is Miss Moneypenny. Felix Leiter also returns, but he's once again played by a different actor. Rick Van Nutter plays... Felix Slider, and I don't remember if he really did anything in this film. But, uh, yeah. New characters are Claudine Auger as Domino, and she's really hot. She's gorgeous. Uh, Adolfo Cell as Emilio Lago, Spectre Agent number two, uh, ranked number two, which is the, you know, when they did Awesome Powers, and number two is based on him, even had an eye patch. Only, only it was Robert Wagner, and he wasn't Hispanic, but, um, Guy Dolman is Count Lippe. Uh, Luciano Paluzzi is Fiona Volpe, who is the first female femme fatale of the series. The female villain. The first real... I mean, well... I guess you had... Uh, Verna... Verna? The chick from the the first... The second film, who I forgot was even a villain in that film. Was it... Uh, Verna Kleb, something like that. Rosa Kleb, Rosa Kleb. What? Well, I don't care. Good movie. I didn't even realize she was the main villain. Um, and uh, Paul Stasino as Francois Durval slash Angelo Palazzi, which uh. Francois is Domino's brother who is murdered and then he is replaced by someone who got plastic surgery to look like him. It's the same actor. It's Angelo. And then, yeah. So the plot is that... Uh, is that Spectre has taken two nukes from NATO and is holding the world hostage for 100 million pounds. Or dollars or whatever in money, unless they are paid in diamonds. In, di in diamonds, in diamonds, I guess. Uh, and unless they're paid, they're gonna get nukes. So they have to send James Bond on a way to stop them. And look, this movie is okay, but I found myself drip, drip drifting off in this. The pacing is all over the place. There, there, there seems at the beginning of the film where he's at the spa, where like. This dude, I think it's Lippy. Lippy, turn, he's on this little stretching machine, and it speeds up. It looks like he's dry humping the thing. And then Bond returns the favor by turning up the guy. He's in like a steam machine, and he turns it all the way up to like volcano hot, and steams the guy out. That's fun. And then he, uh, uh, after the whole, you know, dry humping thing or whatever, he gets sped up, and the lady's like, I hope you don't sue us. He goes, well, maybe I can persuade you. It's like, oh, no, you don't mean, oh, yes. And then they get into the, it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. There's that family guy meme, meme where they have, you know, yes, no, James, yes. No, James, yes. No, 
Yes. No. Yes. Okay, yes. Five no's and a yes means yes. I get it. And I see what they mean by that. Sean Connery doesn't take no for answers. Okay? He wants that P. He gonna get. He wants the V. He gonna get the Vijiji. Okay? He's James Bond. You give it to him. And then there, there's one time under water stuff, but even that gets kind of boring because well, you have music playing. We we'll get music in a second. There's no dialogue. It's just they're underwater, and it gets kind of boring to me. Uh, this is not the worst one I've seen so far. I don't know, maybe I don't. This and Doctor No, and I did like Doctor No a little bit better. Maybe it is the worst I've seen so far. I don't know. It's just a little boring for me. I mean, there were still some things, but I found myself drifting off a lot. I don't know. Maybe it's because I this is the first time I've tried to watch two James Bond movies in the same day. Maybe that's why. I don't know. But I thought it was fine. Uh, nothing bad. Connery is still Connery. He's still James Bond. He's still really good. And you have scenes like when he's getting his gadgets from Q and... The whole briefing, which has all the double O agents there, which is pretty cool. You know, they get to see him. Apparently, there's a female one there. I, I don't know. I just hear there is. Um, and I feel like the money plenty scene doesn't happen until halfway through the film. It's really weird. The opening scene, the pre title sequence is at a funeral. It says JB. It's supposed to be misleading. It's for someone else uh, with the initials JB. And then he's watching the person's. Uh, widow and he's like hmm, something's not right and he shows up at the person's house and it's the guy who supposedly died disguised as his own widow and the only reason he figured out it wasn't her is because and this is real date really dated no woman opens the door herself yeah that's a real backwards thinking there <laughs> nowadays you wouldn't be able to catch on to that james i'm just saying Nowadays, women do what they want to do, you know? That's real. Oof. Oof. There's a cool scene on the beach where Bond is flirting with Domino, and there's this guy trying to creep on Bond, and he takes a harpoon and just shoots him, and they go, Oof. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that. It's so nonchalant. And, of course, the film ends with Bond and the Bond girl, Domino, in a raft in the middle of the ocean. Oh, by the way... This is where the, the, the thing... Okay, the end of this. So, uh, Lago has Domino held captive. And so you have James Bond fighting Lago. He feeds him or whatever. And then uh, Domino is just saved by this random dude. And they throw the random dude into the ocean with the life preserver. While Bond and Domino get to a jump in. And they are saved by Felix, I think. And then he drops down on the raft. But the guy is never seen again. Did he drown? Like this random guy that saved Domino, saved Domino's life, he's just gone. And we end with uh, Bond and Domino getting busy on the raft. But what? The guy, is he dead? I, 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 don't, I don't know. He's just gone. There's no mention of anything. It's very confusing. That part got me laughing. Like, wait, what? Wait, where did the guy go? He jumped in with the life preserver, the lifesaver, whatever, the little, you know, donut thing. Bond threw him into the water with that in him, and then that, he's holding it. And that's gone. What happened? And like I said, there's some parts of this movie that's really fun, but there's parts like when they go into the water, it's fun to see Bond underwater. But there's no dialogue. And, all, and it, there's so many of them that it just messes with the pacing. But overall, it's still fine. I think I would kind of rank this under Dr. No for me. But it's fine. It's fine. Uh, as far as Bond's considered, it's not bad. I'm probably going to find Roger Moore movies that are worse than this. <laughs> probably. But uh, yeah, this is really the first of the line of movies, I think. There's like, hey, what if James Bond went here? Like, what if James Bond went underwater? What if James Bond went to Japan? That's the next one. What if James Bond was in a black exploitation film? That's Living That Die. What if John James Bond went to space? That's Moonraker. That sort of thing. 
Like that, do, 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 well, James Bond went to the circus. It's that what? Which one was that one? Spy Who Loved Me? It's one of them. Uh, what if, what if James Bond went to Fantasy Island? The man with the golden gun. Tattoos in that. <laughs> you know? Or you could also face it like this. What if James Bond faced Dracula? Scaramanga is played by Christopher Lee, who was Dracula. I'm just saying. There's a lot of things. What if James Bond did this? That seemed to be their mantra going forward. Except for maybe Majesties. I think Majesties was a little more, you know, Lazen B was a little more uh, subtle with his approach. What if, what if James Bond fell in love? Like, actually fell in love and got married? Spoiler alert. That could be that one. Who knows? But this this was this was fine. It's probably the worst one so far, but worst for Connery. Connery, I think, is still the best James Bond so far. I've always been a Brosnan guy, but Connery is really winning my heart with these. Even in this movie that wasn't so good, Connery was good. So that's got to add for something. So what are your thoughts on Thunderball? By the way, the theme song by Tom Jones, fantastic. I loved it. Not as good as Goldfinger, but still good. What are your thoughts on Thunderball? Leave them in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.